our next flow chart won't be nearly as dense as the confidence interval one is. It's That's a really full page on that one. All right, so this one we want to look at our sample size options. And for that, we have five separate choices to make. There are five different sample size formulas we have learned. Oops, so let me go grab them out of the appendix. So there we go. That's the confidence intervals, right? So it goes confidence intervals, confidence intervals. There's two pages of those. And then right here, sample size. So there's the chapter 9 sample size, and there's the chapter 11 sample size. So there are all the formulas. So I could go write them in right now, and that's actually exactly what I'm going to do. <laughs> all right, so I'm going to go put those all in. Okay, so the first one was P hat times Q hat. And then it was Z alpha over 2 over the error squared. Okay, so we learned that in section, now technically it's in section 9.1, but we didn't really learn it in 9.1 because I make up my own section. So it's really section 9.4 that we learned it. All right, then we learned this one, which is 0.25 times Z alpha over 2 over the error squared. Then there is S times Z alpha over 2 over the error squared. That one's really different. That one's unique. Actually, let me do that one in a different color. One second. There we go. <laughs> kind of made it work. So that's green. And then the bottom two I'm going to do in a, in a different color as well. So they are more complicated. I don't even know if I can fit this one in. So P1 hat times Q, or yeah, P1 hat times Q1 hat plus P2 hat times q2 hat, close that, and then it's z alpha over 2 over the error squared. So that one's a big one. And then this is not nearly as bad. Z, I'm noticing a theme here, in case you're missing it. We keep doing this z alpha over 2 over the error squared thing. Okay, so why did I separate them? Well, okay, these first two are technically section 9.1, but we learned them in 9.4. But they're, they're together, they're grouped together. This one is po percents, population, proportions, right? So this is percents, um, surveys, proportions. For one group, for one population, I'll just say one group, but with a past estimate. Estimate for P hat, right? Something from the past, some old prior estimate. Okay, but that's for one group, right? One population. This one is the same thing. So it's percents, proportions, right? Proportions surveys, right? They'll talk about a survey. And again, it's for one group. But with no past estimate. Of P hat. No guess to what P hat is from the past. All right, so if we look at the page that we saw them on in the exam notes packet, so the one right here, and again, the page might vary depending on what semester you're watching, but what is, going, is not going to change is where I place them. So it's in the top left corner. So the top left one is the P hat times Q hat one, and the top right one is the 0.25. So, and you can see it on the page as well in my yellow packet, although my packet's not actually yellow, <laughs> my exam notes packet, my appendix A. So top left, top right. So, and for me, it's page 275. So this is 275. And then we're going to go to the top right or top left here for this one. And then the 275 top right for this one. Okay, those two are together. They're really doing the same thing, but one of them has a past estimate and one does not. 
Now the middle one I said earlier, that really is different. This is technically from section nine two, but again, I really put it in nine four because I feel like in chapter nine, it's too overwhelming to see it. So 275, this is the one that's right in the middle. It's this one right here. It's kind of in the middle. Right? Of the, of the whole page. <laughs> it's the middle one. And this is going to be unique because this is the only one that's working with means, average, right? So you'll see mean, you'll see a standard deviation given in the problem. So let me actually say average, right? So you'll see the word average somewhere often. And it's the only one that's going to have standard deviation given to you in the problem because that's what S is. When you look at that formula, standard deviation is S. So when you look at that formula, it's got an S in it, then it has to be given to you somewhere, right? So the only one that does that is that particular one. All right, now what about these last two? These are the two that we learned in chapter 11. So if I wanted to break these, this would be, both of these are section 11 one. So this is section 11 one and this is section 11 one. This is on 275, but it's on the bottom left. And this is 275 and on the bottom right. All right, it's the last two on that page. And I can show that to you right here. They're the very last two right there. Okay, so now what do we look for? Well, same as above, honestly, percents, proportions, surveys, but it'll be for two groups instead of just one. So let me kind of fit that in. So percents, now don't get confused by the confidence because the confidence is going to be given to you. That's different. So proportions, surveys for two groups. Okay. And this one is percents, proportions, survey for two groups also. So then what's the difference, you might be thinking. Well, the one here has a prior estimates for P hat, P1 hat and P2 hat. So this one's with past estimates. So something from an old survey or something for P1 hat and P2 hat. This one is with no past estimates. We have no prior study to look at, no guess as to what all of these are. All right, so there we have it. There are the five. Now, the most unique one's really that middle one. I mean, that one sticks out like a sore thumb. If they're talking about averages, if they're talking about standard deviation, it's got to be that one. But keep in mind, all of these are different than the confidence interval ones. So confidence intervals ask will ask you to construct a confidence interval. So if you look here, it's going to say construct a confidence interval. Speaking of which, in the last video, I forgot to mention that these three down here use a critical T value. Sorry about that. But they're going to ask you to construct a confidence interval. It'll say, you know, build a confidence interval, make a confidence interval, something like that. But these are going to have the question words of how many, what sample size. That's really important, right? You got to look for those question words. All of these use a critical value of Z alpha over two, every last one of them. And how do you find critical values? Um, you can see, now for me, it's on page um, 272. It's in your exam, Appendix A exam notes packet, which I keep referring to as your yellow packet, even though it might not be yellow. It's right here, right? So page 272, right there. So how to find that? I'm just going to see page. Now you write whatever page it is for you, but for me, it's page 272. All of these formulas, all of them, every last one of them rounds up no matter what. Even if it's just a tiny little bit over, you will round up to the nearest whole number. You must. Okay. Next, in proportion problems, so four out of the five of these, it's very common for you to be given your error as a percentage, right? That's just extremely common to do. 
So if they do that to you, don't panic, don't fret, just turn it into a decimal, right? Make it into a decimal. So into a decimal. So let me give you an example. If I say, here's a little example here. If they say within 4%, quote unquote, then that would mean that the error that you're going to use in the formula is 0 0.04. You're going to move the decimal four spot, or excuse me, two spots over to 0 0.04, which also leads me to this because the word within is frequently used to indicate the error, right? What error are you willing to live with, right? Within what? Within how much? How much accuracy do you want? So that word right there, we'll, we'll cue that. All right. Then, as we've seen in prior sections, but we'll say it again, error and sample size have an inverse relationship. Oh, I'll just say and vice versa, right? And vice versa. They have an inverse relationship. When one goes up, the other goes down. That's and, right? All right. So then if your C level goes up, your sample size goes up. And if your standard deviation, which is S, if that goes up, then sample size goes up. There's a relationship there. These two are a direct relationship. If one goes up, the other goes up. If one goes down, the other goes down. Simple as that. It's direct, right? So I'm showing them both going up, but I could easily have shown them both going down. It works. This is actually a re inverse relationship. So if, if you look at this one, this is inverse relationship, which also means that if error goes down, N goes up. That's what I mean by vice versa, right? That's an inverse relationship. So they're kind of working opposites to each other. And one other note of caution that I'm just going to add down here, even though I didn't put it in. <laughs> so just a little note which is that um, your C level can be high, but it can never be 100%. And we learned that in chapter nine and we learned it again in chapter 10 and in chapter 11. So C level can be high, but never 100%, right? We're never 100% confident of anything for a lot of reasons that you can imagine what those reasons would be. Namely, that would mean your probability of a type one or a type two error, one of the two of them is gonna go plummeting, that, that kind of thing. So um, that can't happen for starters. Actually, the probability of type one error would become zero, but that's impossible, right? Um, the other issue is also um, be careful not to confuse, um, here I'll just write, be careful not to confuse your confidence level as a percent. All of these problems are going to have a confidence given to you, right? So your confidence level, I don't know why I'm writing that word so weird, confidence level, there we go. Your confidence level will be given to you. That doesn't make it a percent problem, proportion or percent, right? Proportion, percent is a different thing, right? So when I write proportion up above, I'm not talking about the confidence level, right? The confidence level is always a percentage, right? That's just the way they are, they're given to you, but they're going to be, um, a 95% confidence, right? So it'll say confidence somewhere in there, right? That's not the same thing as I'm talking about proportions, you know, 70% of, you know, athletes think blah, 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 right? That's a percent, right? But that's not the same thing as confidence. So even if it's a problem with a mean, this middle one, it's going to have a confidence given to you, but the confidence alone doesn't make it, you know, one of these problems. So you have to look for other things, right? Besides the confidence to figure out which one it is. And always remember that you're looking for the question words because um, confidence interval questions and sample size questions all will have confidence kind of thrown in there as a word. But how do you know which one is what you're doing is very important, right? You're going to look for those question words of how many versus construct a confidence interval, right? They say construct, that's one of these ones, right, from the previous flow chart. And if they say how many, that's one of these sample size questions right here.